quickly and do Mr. Fallon, then Mr. Horsford, and then we are going to be done. Mr. Fallon, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. During this hearing, the, word, uh, the virtue of courage was used to describe the current president, and I think that's misplaced. I think the virtue of courage should be attributed to the 2,461 troops that we lost, that gave everything, the 20,698 that were maimed and injured and wounded, and the 800,000 that served. I'm a little perplexed, and I, thank you for being here. I wanted to clear something up. During the testimony, uh, General McKenzie, you were asked when you knew that the drone strike on August 29th had gone tragically wrong, and if, correct me just yes or no, you said about five or six hours later you'd learn that, is that correct? That's, well, that's when we learned that civilians had been killed. Okay, and it, so it went wrong. No, I did not say that. Okay. I said that's when we learned that civilians had been killed. We still Would you have know considered, considered that five or six hours later a, a righteous strike? It, we, we took that strike based on the belief that the vehicle was going to be used in an attack against us. So we knew that people that should have been killed were killed five or six hours after, yes? We knew that, we, that, that probably people that were not involved in, okay. in an attack. All right, thank you. It took us a little, lo a little okay. longer to thank learn you. the rest thank of the story. Agreed. Secretary um, Austin, same. You learned about five or six hours after that people that should have been killed were killed. Well, I learned from uh, General McKenzie's reporting that uh, there was collateral damage. Okay, Again, thank whenever you. that happens, we investigate. Okay. And then, uh, General Milley, on September 1st, three days later, you described it as a righteous strike. People that were not supposed to be killed were killed, and you described it as a righteous strike. Yeah, if you go back and look at the full quote, what I said was we followed the procedures. Uh, I had every reason to believe that, um, that we followed our procedures at that point in time. We knew that there were civilians killed. We knew there were noncombatants, and there was uh, collateral damage. Yes, you but said, were others killed? Yes. yes. Who were they? We don't yeah. know. We're trying to sort that's through exactly all that. Right. But that's it's exactly a right what I said. And I, that's right. And so because I believed. Kill people we shouldn't have. I, I believe, it was a righteous I strike. I believe that the target that okay. we were aiming and at. I, sir, and I, I believe the target we were aiming at was. was okay. There. I have three that's more minutes. I can, thank you. Uh, now, General Miller, you served under both President Trump and Biden. Um, Correct. Okay. Um, I've spoken with. Secretary, a former Secretary of State, Pompeo, had a very extensive conversation with uh, Director, a former National Director of Intelligence, John Ratcliffe. And what was the general sentiment of senior advisors? If conditions weren't met, what would happen in Afghanistan? How long that the Afghan uh, army and government would last? Do you recall that? Yeah, I, mean, I would imagine you were sitting in on those meetings. I'm not sure I'm understanding the question. If okay. conditions are not met. If conditions aren't met and we withdraw, how long is the Afghan government going to last? Back then. I'm not going to speak for them. I'll speak for myself. Yeah, please do. I, yeah. they, they, so I know I, they told me. I, I'm on record um, having said that if we go to zero, uh, that there's a high probability of um, the government and the Afghan army collapsing. Mm -hmm. In terms of time, uh, I, pu I put that at between one and three years at the time I wrote this stuff back in okay. a year so, ago in the fall of So this is that's interesting that you say that because when I talk to both uh, Mr. Pompeo and Mr. Ratcliffe, yeah. they, they told me mm. that it was uni there was unanimity. Even President Trump said, if conditions are not met, that the Afghan army and the government would collapse within weeks. And the longest uh, they heard, maybe a month or two, is what they gave me. Because I was just surprised yeah. that, because Secretary Austin said in his remarks today, that the fact that the Afghan army, uh, we and our partners trained, simply melted away in many cases was a shock. Mm -hmm. John Ratcliffe told me he told his, uh, his successor that they were going to collapse instantaneously if those conditions weren't met. They were going to evaporate. And now we're I don't know what was a surprise. What I think, with yeah. General Milley, with all due respect, sure. what, what I think it is, it was not a failure of intelligence, it seems to me. I didn't know this stuff. I'm asking. I went in the room. You were. Mm. That it was a failure to heed that intelligence and, and act accordingly. I can now, show you the intelligence reports uh, that were produced under that, Mr. Ratcliffe. That, that, thank you, and, and I appreciate that. I have 50 seconds left, so I appreciate sure. that. Thank you. All right, so we got 5,000 bad guys in Bagram and jail at Bagram, right? Am I right, General McKenzie? And then we, uh, we go down to 650. We can't hold it, so we split. But around July, July 1st, I think we left? 12th. 12th July 12th. 12th. And it fell August 15th, correct? And they got out then? 16th. Right around. August 16th. And then we have a, an attack on our troops a couple weeks later. Can, can any of you guarantee the American people that of those 5,000 bad guy scumbags, none of them were directly responsible for killing our troops? No, I cannot. I cannot guarantee that, no. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back my time. Thank you. Mr. Horsford is recommended.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Mr. Secretary, and to the generals, I'll be brief. I have several questions and a 